I'm Thomas Baldrick at the ASH 2014 conference in San Francisco, and this conversation is going to be epic. And that's mainly because we have Dr. Jeffrey Lipton joining us from the Princess Margaret Hospital in Toronto, talking about the phase three epic trial. Thank you, sir, for coming by. Pleasure. So you compared panatinib with imatinib. Um, who were the patients you were trying to help here? All the patients on the study had to be newly diagnosed, previously untreated patients with chronic myeloid leukemia and chronic phase. So brand new patients, no exposure to any other medication. And how many were you able to put on it? We were to put on a little over 100, uh, about 150. Uh, the study was terminated earlier because of other issues, so it never accrued the full number of patients that were. Okay. What were the results that you had? The, the results were very interesting. In, in terms of the efficacy of the drug, panatinib proved to be an extremely powerful drug with very prompt, deep responses, far exceeding those of imatinib. On the downside, however, there was a lot more toxicity, and that is, is an issue in terms of actually treating patients. So what does this mean for the future of panatinib? Well, at this point in time, I don't think panatinib is a drug at the current study levels that makes it ready for first-line use. It will remain a drug that's extremely effective in people who are resistant to treatment with other drugs for various reasons, including certain mutations. But I think we need to do a lot more work in terms of finding appropriate doses that make it a little more practical to use with those individuals and perhaps at that time rethink about moving it back into first-line therapy. How do you move forward when something like this happens? Well, sometimes you move forward by taking a step back. You look at the pluses and you look at the minuses and you look at where the problems are and you figure out, well, we know the effectiveness is, is good and we know also that there's a dose relationship in the effectiveness. But we also know that there's a dose relationship with the toxicity. So you think, well, if that is the case, Perhaps we can do this study again, or at least look at salvage using a lower dose of drug, which will get the same benefit for those patients who need it, but without the toxicities that we're seeing. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I think the, the drug is there for the future. It would be limited in terms of who we'll use right now, and I think the company that makes the drug is, is working with the FDA in particular to try and find a better way, safer way to administer the drug and uh, hopefully it'll still be around because there are patients who need it because there are CML patients where nothing else will work. Exactly. Thank you very much, doctor.